The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 407 Castle Climb 2 The lady peered down from the shadows of her ballroom balcony, taking stock of the situation as three guards and an angry chef argued about searching for her. Polish imbeciles, Moriarty berated, waving his cleaver at the blue armored trio. Do your job, little rust creation, so that I may return to craft and great masterpieces for tomorrow's feast. You see the size of this room, right? The guard questions, slinking back unhappily. It's dark, huge, with hanging cover, and did I mention it's dark? We won't even know where she is, and there's only four of us. Three of you, Moriarty furiously corrected, dancing a jig of rage. You guard, I cook. His facial hair drooped in a stern frown. Make that too, because I'm off duty, another guard added, rubbing the back of his neck. Just let it go, Cook. It's just a Cerosian. The third guard spread her wings, interrupting and seizing the floor. No, hold on. I think we can do this. If Moriarty's too angry, he'll ruin whatever he cooks, and I was counting on not having to go grocery shopping tomorrow because of the free meal. Besides, this is always funny. Funner than listening to my kids argue at home, at least. Everyone's watching the sky, right? Much muttering ensued, along with another angry rant from the chef, but the speaking griffin continued. All we need to do is turn the lights on and that'll pin the Cerosian wherever she is and flush her out. Moriarty, you go get the lights. The three of us will fly around and make sure she doesn't try to fly away before we pinpoint her. No, Moriarty snapped. You'll flee while my back is turned. I got. But didn't you just say, a guard protested feebly, uh, the lady silently groaned. Was it worth waiting to see if they'd go away? Uh, she was hidden for now, but if they succeeded in turning on the lights while she was still in the ballroom, it would be much easier for her to get found. But where was the right way out? Her balcony had an access door to a hallway that ran outside the ballroom, but a quick peek underneath told her the hall was patrolled by an earnest-looking guard with a light who somehow hadn't heard the commotion outside. Uh, not that way. Sizing up her options for leaving the balcony, there were several nearby marble support columns, a lengthy drape hanging from the ceiling. Uh, that would be her best bet, even if a cutie mark warned her that someone might see. The lady dove into the fabric, feeling it swish and betray her with movement, even as she sank into its shattered folds, swimming upward as hard as she could. Ahoy! Moriarty howled from below. I saw a curtain move up above. God, stop slacking! Bananas, she had been seen. The lady doggedly continued to climb, keeping watch for anywhere else she could hide. If only she had a distraction. It's just a draft, you blow hard, the guard droned from midair, and the lady winced, realizing at least one was wheeling in search of her. That meant someone else had gone to get the lights. She dropped out of the shadow, flapping and hovering behind the curtain's cover, checking her saddlebags for anything that could act as a distraction. She needed... Fruit! Licking her lips and murmuring a silent apology at the waste of a potentially fine meal, the lady pulled down an apple, kissed it, and hurled it as hard as she could towards one side of the room. Bash! The apple exploded against the floor with a crispy splat, instantly attracting Moriarty's attention. Goz! He kidded Come on, evidence! I tell you she plundered my stores! She must be this way! Arrest her! It's a distraction, the flying guard boredly said, stopping to watch Moriarty as the enraged chef nevertheless flew straight up from the apple's landing site, vengeance in his eyes. That means she's anywhere but in that curtain. Ironic, Lily thought, because the guard staring at Moriarty meant he was looking into one place he knew she wasn't. She took wing, darting out and streaking for a banner laced along the rooftop right next to a grand chandelier. The room's highest balcony ran across three exits on the far side, meaning she could slip past any lone guard patrolling them, even if he had a light. She just needed to get into that banner and hide. Her cutie mark flared and she pumped her wings harder, realizing that someone was about to look. Then the chandelier came ablaze with light. With a wump of fabric, the lake collided with the now brightly lit banner, plowing straight through and taking it with her. She hissed, tumbling, trying to throw it off so her wings could get free, her cover thoroughly blown. See? There she is, the hovering guard said calmly, folding his forelegs in triumph and not giving chase. I told you she wasn't in. Hey, what are you doing? Blaze cutie mark burned with an even higher spike of danger. 
You shall pay for the fight in my kitchen, Moriarty roared, and she got the tapestry under control just in time to see him charging her face with his cleaver brandished. Making use of the only weapon she held in her hooves, she flung the heavy sheet back at him like a net, entangling him and setting him tumbling groundward. As he fell, she prepared to run again, eyeing the guard and noticing he was far more interested in Moriarty than her. Yo, cook, the guard pointed at Talon. Charging people with a chopping thing like that is a little more against the law than trespassing is. I'm going to need to ask you to calm down. His eyes widened as Moriarty hacked the rug-like bandit to shreds, emerging with his beak open in a screech. And so is vandalism. I'm pretty sure that was odd. Uh, back up? Blaze saw the other two griffin guards approaching, but Moriarty was fast enough to make her take matters into her own hooves. Readying a zucchini she had taken, even though they weren't her favorite, she reared back and flung it like a boomerang, skillfully nailing the chef in the face. Pow! A double door at ground level burst open, and a platoon of six much better armed griffins with more decorations on their armor marched through. What's going on here? The leader bellowed, a tall, pompous, feathered hat that made Valet green with envy, denoting his rank. She plundered and defiled my kitchen, Moriarty rasped, voice hoarse from screeching. Arrest! 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 He, uh, just shredded the tapestry and looks like a crazed axe murderer, the hurry guard added. Don't you guys do background checks when hiring cooks? The new squad's leader nodded. Two troublemakers, right, spread out and secure the exits. You there, surrender immediately! Woo-oh! Valet glanced to the nearest balcony, which was still a ways away, and briefly contemplated dropping the chandelier in the new squad. Uh, but there was no way that could end well, and Moriarty was still on her tail. Folding her wings and diving, she abandoned all pretenses of stealth, aiming for the nearest door out of the ballroom and hoping it led higher into the keep. Swoosh! A female griffin in sharp-edged armor cut her off, metallic wing enhancements on the suit looking designed to boost the thrust of anyone strong enough to use them. She was smart enough not to waste her breath on a challenge and hovered loosely, ready to intercept a feint. Far too prepared for Vatric, Valet bulldozed straight into her. The griffin's heavy armor gave her far too much inertia, and the impact legitimately hurt, even though Valet had dodged the sharp edges, but the griffin was unprepared and she was able to flip away and dart past. She didn't try any fancy combat maneuvers to confuse or disable. They would be a lot more interested in hunting her if they thought she was a dangerous fighter as opposed to a fleeing miscreant. Hey, this way's out, right? She asked the griffin, turning around and trying the door, only to find it locked. Her heart tightened. With the lights on, she couldn't shadow sneak through. I really want to leave you guys alone and just chill out. Isn't that cool? You'll be given justice in due process, the griffin assured her, realizing she was trapped and waiting for backup to corner her for good. Please come quietly. This will go a lot better if you're innocent and don't resist. Ah ha! Uh, Valet swallowed and nodded as another joined her. She still needed a way out. And then one presented itself in the form of Moriarty barreling at them from behind with his cleaver intent on her alone and somehow having given his own pursuers a slip. Yo! Behind you! She warned, trying to sound as earnest as possible. We're not clang! Do your job and arrest your imbeciles, Moriarty panted, looking far more exerted than was healthy for a griffin of his constitution. Oh, get out of my way! The hit guard toppled, stunned by the ringing in her helmet after contact with the back of Moriarty's now dented cleaver, a fact which didn't seem to bother the chef at all. The other guard hesitated, glanced at them with clear surprise, and chose to catch his comrade, leaving Moriarty charging at fillet. Planning herself expertly, she rolled out of the way at the last second, and the choppy griffin hit the doors instead. The locks and hinges were designed to withstand only polite company, and they splintered, the wooden panels tearing themselves from the walls as Moriarty became entangled in his own mess. That was Valet's cue to leave. Okay, bye! She slipped through a hole in the wreckage he had created, grabbing his cleaver and hurling it to the side along the balcony for good measure. Best he choose between getting that back and following her if she stood the chance of running into civilians later on. End of chapter 407